uh, exam questions that we've seen said, how would you uh, create a fairer public? I think back in 2010, our manifesto was kind of creating a fairer future for all. Uh, and this year, it's about delivering a fairer future for all. And really, in terms of how we would create a fairer uh, borough, I point to our record. We made various pledges to the electorate in 2010, all of which uh, I believe we have kept, including pledges such as delivering free healthy school meals for all our primary school children, uh, embarking on a programme to make every council home warm, dry uh, and safe, doubling recycling, uh, and we've gone beyond that because we've had to respond to severe cuts to our budget uh, over the last four years. We've lost something like £80 million pounds or 25% of uh, the funding that we received from government. And we responded to that, I think, well. Uh, we've kept council tax uh, low, frozen it over the last four years. Uh, we have continued to invest, though, in services. We've invested in the people who work for us by paying the London living wage uh, and ensured that that's paid through to uh, our contractors. So I think we've responded well to the cuts that we have faced and also things like our youth fund, which provides support for those 16 and 18 year olds continuing in education in our borough. Looking to the future, how do we continue to deliver that fairer future? We've promised uh, and we will deliver 11,000 new council homes between now and over the next 25, 30 years, 1,500 of which will be built and delivered in the next four years. Uh, we pledge to uh, sort out affordable childcare, quality affordable childcare in our borough, launching a commission uh, and uh, to build two new community nurseries. A and we've said that we will make swimming and gym use free for all residents of the borough. With the voluntary sector, I think we've again responded well over the past four years. Uh, we have a cabinet member for volunteering, building on the wonderful volunteering that we saw coming out of the Olympics. We have a volunteering strategy for the first time uh, ever in our borough, and I believe that we can continue to give good financial support to the voluntary sector over this past four years and will continue to do so. We've committed to working with the voluntary sector on a commission. I think most importantly to sort out how, what part the voluntary sector play, plays uh, as we see a greater integration of health and adult social care between the health service uh, and local authorities. What is the role uh, of the voluntary sector in those circumstances? So I'm confident that we are a party that has a record we can be proud of, that has a vision to create jobs, homes, uh, and the opportunity that will deliver a fairer future for our residents and a fairer future for our voluntary sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our second speaker is going to be Eleanor Marley from the um, Green Party. So, you know, the key on fairer and your party working with the sector. Thank you. So I'd like to say, first of all, that I think in a way it's not the place of the political party to tell the community and voluntary sector what to do. It's about listening to what to say. And that may seem a very pat and easy thing for anyone to say, but in fact a lot of the most exciting and interesting policies in the Green Party Manifesto have come out of exactly those kinds of conversations on the record and off the record. So we're very much interested in devolving responsibility to the lowest reasonable level and also to valuing the expertise that arises from experience at the grassroots. A question about fairness. A lot of people in the past have thought of the Green Party as only concerned with environmental issues, but I want to stress that it's very much about environmental and social justice going hand in hand. So, for example, take public health, which Ms. John has spoken about. What is the second cause of premature death in this borough after smoking? Air pollution. Thank you. Air pollution. You might think it affects all of us equally. We all breathe the same air. But the people who are worst affected are the poorest in our borough because they live nearest to the main road. They have fewer opportunities of access to green spaces. So the inequality of environmental problems is not equally shared out. Now, I think we're probably in the Green Party aware that we're not going to be leaving the council after the election, maybe the next election. What we can bring particularly is the big picture, and I want to talk about a couple of examples where Green Council 
socialists on other councils have brought in policies that have worked with cross-party support. And we don't, it helpfully spoke about the London living wage, which has made a material difference going from £6.31 on the minimum wage to £8.80. It's a significant contribution to the poorest people in the borough. It was a previous Green councillor, Jenny Jones, who proposed it. The council agreed to it, and then there was a lot of lobbying from the Green Party to make sure that it was implemented as a policy. So one Green councillor could make quite a difference there. Another policy comes from Kirk Leeds in Yorkshire, where they implemented the warm zone policy, going much further than current government ideas for warm homes. They reduced emissions by 34% across Turkey. But they did much more than that. They reduced basic budgets, basic bills for utilities, for fuel, by £400 a household. That's putting money back in the pocket of the poorest people. And they created three dozen jobs. That's jobs in insulation and energy efficiency. And those kinds of jobs are the ones that will continue. So those are a couple of concrete examples where by working with local organisations, we are coming back to work with organisations in this borough in terms of fuel policy and employment. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, CIS and Gordon, for the invite to me. I'm uh, Bill Mullins. I'm standing in as a candidate in Bermondsey South for the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition with standing 10 candidates against across uh, Southwark, 200 across London, and nearly 600 across, uh, across England for the election of May the 22nd. Trade Union and Socialist Coalition was set up by Bob Crow, uh, the general sector, the ex general, the, the deceased general sector of the RNC. Trade union, and we're a coalition of left parties and groups and trade unions who have come together because we believe that all other parties, including the Green Party in Brighton, are carrying out cuts and it's completely unnecessary. Cuts are a result of a crisis in the banking system which resulted in the austerity programme of the coalition government. We believe that it's completely unfair that the mass of the people have been asked to t pay the price. For the, for the crisis created by a few. We call, and we are campaigning, for no cuts whatsoever. We call on the, on the Labour Council in Southwark to set a, set a new budget, not a budget based on what the money they think they're going to get from the government, which has already been said has been cut by 25% in four years. The passing on those cuts, this, this council is, carrying, is, is, is um, axing on behalf of the Tory and Liberal coalition, all the services that, are, that the ordinary people depend on that make for a civilised life. And I've been including that, cuts that are already taking place in the voluntary sector nowadays, and the suspicions will be there, and that will continue to be. It's in the interest of all of us to ensure that we have a, we have a campaign that, uh, that stops the cuts, and the only way that can be done is on, a, on a, all London all, all Britain basis that stops the cuts as a result of mass struggle. And that's what the trade unions stand for. That's what the Socialist Coalition stands for. The uh, Labour Council, in four years, despite what Peter said, has only built 33 council houses since they've been in power. Mm -hmm. they, in effect, the Labour Council in Southwark is carrying out social cleansing by, by, by forcing people who live in the north of the border that is their poor down into the south of the borough. By the policy of payments in lieu to the big developers, 500 luxury homes were built in, at, the end of a, at, the, at the end of a London Bridge, and not one penny has been given by the developers to, to, uh, to actually introduce social housing. Instead, they've handed over 60 to 75 million pounds to the Labour Council. What's going to be done with that money? In my opinion, that's going to be a, a stopgap because of the cuts that have been introduced by the central government grants to Southern Council. That is unacceptable in my view. That's why we're standing as far as that's concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. John Hillings, next.
Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you to CAF and to Southwark Cathedral for having everybody, um, certainly ourselves here from UKIP this afternoon. What is fairness? That's one of the most important uh, core act, uh, aspects of uh, why we're here this afternoon. Surely it's the, quali the quality of life opportunities applicable to all, and society needs for that to work the wherewithal, uh, the stability and cohesion, security and genuine opportunities for the future to be out there to go and get. And it is our fundamental belief that um, in this confines of this grand cathedral that stood for one and a half thousand years, the great heritage that we've picked up ourselves today in Southwark, is under more pressure and more threat than ever before because of our membership of the European Union and the factors that that brings upon us out of which we have no control. And without that control, we cannot really address solutions to these problems, such as those that my previous speaker so eloquently outlined to you about housing. How can we provide sufficient housing with 200,000 people in coming every year into this country net? It simply isn't possible. We have to control our borders. We have uncontrolled immigration from the the European Union, and that's a central core. If we had control, we would be able to offer the uh, voluntary community sector and uh, those people, of course, who you serve in Southwark a greater degree of fairness because the pressure and the demand on public services would not be continuously increasing. How can we provide a, a one house every seven minutes to satisfy demand? It cannot be done. How can we provide enough greenfield sites or brownfield sites to build the housing on? the infrastructure to provide for the housing, it's all a crazy cycle which never, never seems to have proper ending. Furthermore, the EU budget that we contribute would come back to us and on anybody's calculations, even if we only took a quarter at local authority level of the repatriated money we give to the EU, then Southwark alone would stand to benefit from around about £10 million a year, which would represent a budget increase that Peter, I'm sure, would welcome of 10% overall to his, uh, his budget. So those cuts that he talked about, we don't see the necessity. We see necessity of cuts in certain amounts of waste and certain amounts of putting uh, endless things out to uh, consultants that could be done in-house. It could be done by the voluntary and community sector much better than Price, Waterhouse and Ernst and & Young. And that's another point that I'd like to make, and that is linking up local activism people like school governors, and people who sit on patient participation groups, members of foundation trusts, of which we have great institutions here in our borough, in the NHS, and linking them to you guys in the VCS, and you being advocates for them, and we see the community councils would be the perfect forum in which to have that merging of, of enthusiasm take place, and we hope that if you elect our councillors, we will bring some pressure to bear on Southwark Town Hall, to usher in a new era and a new start for all of us, including, with your help, the VCS. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here with you because both you and I are passionate about volunteering. I would first like to tell you about myself. I will then share how APP's vision will make Southern fairer and how we will work together to achieve it. I love my community. I'm a patron for a number of voluntary organizations, including an Irish dance club in Bermondsey, a choir in Rother Heights, and a basketball club in Chatham. My other passion is equality at the top. That's why, with some local community champions, we started All People's Party. With nearly 50% minority population, it is not acceptable that we have only one minority leader out of 30 top political leaders in South. It is inequality at the top when out of every pound paid in salary to these 13 leaders, only 7 cents goes to top minority leaders. Therefore, under Labour's failed leadership, we have two Southerns, one for the privileged few and one for the rest of us. Southern is divided. For example, the Labour Council contributed 46,000 pounds to celebrate Armed Forces Day, <coughs> attended by 2,000 people, 95% indigenous, and I'm very happy about it. Whereas, it gave zero pounds to celebrate Eid festival, attended by 5,000 people, 99% minority. And by the way, that festival was 
100% organized by volunteers. APP's reason is to have one color that puts the community first, taps the talent of all residents, and provides a promising future for all of us. We will work with you in three ways to do this. First, we will provide opportunities for every community in our borough to come together, share experiences, and have fun. We will introduce a startup volunteer day. Second, we will invest in you by providing spaces to work from, training, and an immediate funding of one million pounds to help with expenses. Why? Because you are saving the council money every day by giving your time, talent, expertise, and love for free. Finally, we will recognize our unsung heroes who make a difference in the lives of our residents. Having recognized 20 plus community champions today, we will continue to celebrate your contribution. We are proud of you. To conclude, by working hand in hand, we can achieve equality at the top. Our destination is shared. I believe in what Henry Ford said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. And ladies and gentlemen, together we can build one further. Thank you. For those of you who are still awake, I want to say three things. Uh, the first of those is to talk about values. The second is to talk about democratic accountability. And the third is to talk about equality and empowerment, which were the, the, the homework for this event. Uh, the first of those then values, I stand here and I look at a room of people, uh, men and women, black and white, of all creeds and of none, uh, who want to work together to empower the most vulnerable in our society. I know I can recognize those features because I see them every day in the volunteers who are out campaigning for us, the Conservatives, to try and win this council. I stand here uh, representing one of only three groups, along with Labour and the Liberal Democrats, who are, uh, are sufficiently organized, have sufficient public support to even be able to put up enough candidates to give everyone in Southwark the chance to vote for, you, uh, uh, to vote for us across Southwark. These people talk about how excellently organized they are. They can't even give the voters in the wards that they live in three candidates from their party to vote for. Uh, see if they can then organize their way in a wet paper bag if they're elected. I leave that to you. Secondly, I want to talk about uh, accountability. It's very important, after the next election, should there be a commission set up, that these, uh, the, 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 the synergy and the partnerships between the, the voluntary sector and local government do not result in a muddying of democratic accountability. There have been mistakes in the past. We know that £70,000 was given to a charity that was defunct and had to be uh, re recorded with the Electoral Commission. We know that whenever there's a blurring of the lines between what government does, uh, uh, what councils do, and the voluntary sector, there needs to be oversight. How do I know this? Because I work with local councils and I work uh, with charitable organisations when I represent them in my day job as a lawyer. So I know what their responsibilities are and I know where legal responsibility starts with one and finishes with the other. And we, the Conservatives, stand forthright for making sure that your money is being spent efficiently and making sure that there is real scrutiny and oversight over what is going on. Because you'll know from your work in the charitable sector, as is in local government, that mistakes are made and that people, however well-meaning, uh, are want sometimes to put that money into things that it shouldn't do. And we're very keen as conservatives, passionate, that it's your money first and foremost, and we'd like to give it back to you. And that's where equality and empowerment come in. Because we say that if we could reduce council tax in this area and give people up to £530, that's the difference between Bandy council taxpayers in Southwark and Bandy council taxpayers in, in Conservative Wandsworth Council, give that money back to people. Why? It will relieve the pressures on, on, on local charitable uh, industries. It will actually give people more money in their pocket to help them with their household bills and also give them the chance to volunteer their time and their money to help with the activities that you are undertaking. So we believe in accountability. We stand for the same values and we campaign on the same values as you as empowering uh, the least well off in, in our society. And we are organized. We have got together a full slate of candidates. We are a respectable, decent party that stands across this borough. Some of the people on this stage haven't even got three candidates in every ward. Can you take them seriously? I don't think so. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, 
Um, thank you very much to Gordon and Kev for organising this evening. Oh, for me. Feels like um, sorry, a bit tough going last. Um, yeah, thank you very much. These things take a long, lot of time and energy to organise, so it's appreciated. Um, I'm Councillor Anida Samurai. I'm the leader of the Liberal Democrat Council Group in Southwark, and we have 25 councillors across the borough. When I first became leader of our group in 2010, one of the very first things which I did was to go around the borough meeting different voluntary and community sector groups. Um, I was stunned, frankly, uh, at how impressive our voluntary sector is. We have so many people dedicating time, energy, love and affection uh, to people in this borough, and we are really, really bloody lucky. So um, thank you uh, to everyone in this room for all that they do. To be brutally honest, there was a bit of a political motive for me going around these groups because you guys are the opinion formers and stakeholders and all those other awful words uh, to describe people who do things in the community. Um, and so it was helpful for me to introduce myself as Lib Dem leader and also um, to hear about the issues on the ground. But actually, the other reason I went around was because I genuinely believe that Southwark Council does not have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. And actually, it's the voluntary sector which so often is on the ground dealing with those very real issues that Southwark residents face. And actually, it's often the voluntary sector that has solutions which are both creative and also compassionate. For me, one of the things that makes me a liberal, and which you will see running through the heart of our manifesto, is about letting go of power, about saying that I don't always know best, that actually it's people in communities who should make decisions about their own lives. So a lot of what's in our manifesto is about letting go of money and also letting go of power and decision making. Whether it's to do with cycling or play areas, quite frankly, people in the town hall don't know best and nor should they be the ones making the decisions. The other thing that strikes me in going around and having conversations is that actually relations are fairly good uh, a lot of the time between council officers and the voluntary sector. But it's still far too paternalistic giving out pocket money, rather than a genuine, equal, two-way relationship. It shouldn't always be about the council funding the voluntary sector, although there is absolutely an important role for council funding and helping getting other sorts of funding. But actually, it should also be about what the voluntary sector can do for the council. Because like I say, often, you are the people with the answers. The other priorities in our manifesto, which we'll touch on later, are around home, job, childcare. They're absolutely key for us and form the centre of what we're talking about. And um, I think particularly in jobs, there's a lot more we can do with business with corporate social responsibility and the council has a key role there. So I think in terms of having a commission where we work together, genuine decision making and working more with business in the borough, we can actually make things better. Thank you very much.